All right, so my name is Lila Van Pelt. I'm one of the commentators for the Kent State for Central Michigan. And I'm Ryan Ben. And sorry we're joining you late after the first point. We had some technical difficulties. Uh, Kent State was able to win the first point after about 18 minutes or 18, so. 18 minutes or so. And Wesley Peters had played one of the best points I've ever seen by a player. Surviving on his own for over 10 minutes, taking out multiple Kent State players. Making catches, tags, he just took out several players from Kent State. Phenomenal fight from that team. Our rest of the game are Mike McCarthy, Felix Perron, and our shot clock ladies are Brittany Rogers and Kat Takeda. And we're about to start the second, the second point. And the countdown is about to start, and we're off. Point two for Kent State for Central Michigan. And it appears they come out even on the rush. Ryan Hinman getting a tag on number 14, Jason Aldani. Central Michigan is only playing this game with 10 players, so they're already at a significant disadvantage. This is the third year in a row that Kent State and Central Michigan have squared off on day one of national. Previous two years, Central Michigan taking it, but we'll see how it goes this year. And Strenstrel is appearing to have a little bit more fight this game. Jacob Lesky for Central Michigan making a catch against Kent State. And with three players out for Kent and not out for Central, this match, this point is almost even in players. Just like to point out that in the first point for this, rookie Mark. Faria? I'm sorry if I butchered your last name, Mark. You showed fantastic fight out on the court. Had an excellent tag on Kent's cat and Dan Shackleford. The catch by James. James Paltani from Kent State. for saving my face, Ryan. I was saving my own face. Not sure what your face was. <laughs> These are some new glasses frames I'm wearing. <laughs> Kent State seems to be in their comfort zone being up in the neutral zone, keeping Central Michigan pushed back. Some rowdiness is going on on the court next to us. And Victor Prowro just got a nice tag on Wesley Peters. Enough. We're at like six and a half minutes left in the half. Approximately, somewhere around there. Felix Perone doesn't exactly know how much time there is. It's a nice block from Mitch Malio, number eight from Kent State. 
pushing the ball down to the ground, bringing it back to his team. It's always a good thing to see when you're blocking. Number 11 for Central Michigan, Michael Riley is very active on the court. Keeps his feet moving, that prevents toe tags. Very smart tactic. Central Michigan has brought six first year players to this tournament. Six first year players that play like they've been playing for multiple years now. That's always been Central Michigan's way though. They're a very athletic team. Always showing a lot of fight and a lot of fire on the court. If it's literally like right at the back wall, can they just go get it? Raise your hand. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. As long as they're not dodging or Right, no. Obviously, yeah. Thanks. Penn State is up in above half court, making some team throws, and they miss. Catch from number 11, Michael Riley. Just kind of stuck in his hands. I don't even think he saw it coming. And this transition game is in full effect here as the teams are running back and forth. Tag made by Dan Shackelford. I'm Kevin Grieg, number six from Central Michigan. A diving catch attempt from Dan Shackelford is a miss. Central Michigan has seven players. Kent State has one, two, three. Nine, ten players left on the court. Remaining five minutes. Five minutes left in this half. And it is getting furious out here. That was a fast paced action as teams were going back and forth. And I think Kent State came out on the losing end of that. And a nice toe tag by Burke Carr. Bringing it down to six players. If Central loses one more player, then they're down to a 10 second shot clock. Three forty-five seconds remaining in this second, in this first half of the Kent State Central Michigan game. The Chippewas are battling very hard, giving Kent State all they can handle. And Mike McCarthy had ref blue whistle, saying "balls over, shot clock violation" on Central Michigan. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Some people don't record, uh, attempt to record the first point of the game, you know? It's no big deal. It's whatever. Three minutes, 20 seconds. Sometimes I like to sing in the shower. I hit people with my car. It's no big deal. <laughs> I have nothing to say to that, Ryan. I have nothing to say to that. Central ready! Get ready! And the team throw after the shot clock violation was no good. Uh, did it take someone out? I am not positive. Nope, we're still at six players for Central Michigan. Still keeping a 15 second shot clock for them. And Central just lost one, so now they are down to 10 seconds. 
it's normally pretty tricky for teams, but it's hard to keep that energy alive when you're throwing a ball every 10 seconds. But with Central Michigan's athleticism, it seems to be no problem for them. But that actually may be a topic of discussion at, at tomorrow's captain's meeting of uh, lowering the shot clock to 10 seconds full time. That's just what a little birdie told me. Do you have any more any more information regarding that, or is that all? I know I would about? actually prefer it in the league, even though I'm done in playing. Whoa. <laughs> Camden Fuller almost just took that off of a bystander just and watching the game. Bystander. Just trying to have a good time. He's watching the game. Two minutes. Two minutes. And if you heard Felix Brown right there, there's two minutes left in the half. Aaron Riffle with a catch attempt that failed. So Central knocks out another Kent State player. Wesley Peters gets to come back in the game for Central as a catch was made. Michael Riley being the one who made the catch. Thank you. He really is a quick player, Riley, number 11. He has been all over the court. You always need that in a player on your team, though. hard all night though so it's nice to see that energy out there. He was a little bit lacking though. It was probably an ill advised throw. He had no one around him on his team to help him. And another shot clock violation on Central Michigan. Captain Peters getting a little frustrated at the lack of team effort and calling out that shot clock. 45. 45 seconds left in the half. Shot clock clouder Brittany Rogers is doing a fantastic job. Central ready! Get ready! John Denhardt are keeping a low ball on that throw there. And I think with the limited amount of time remaining in the point that both teams are just going to stall it out to a half. It's got mighty slow out there, Layla. With 45 seconds left, it's probably the smartest decision for Central to make. And that's, and that's the end, the end of, of the first half. Kent State goes into the half with a one-point lead, one to nothing.